no time for games. my assistance. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, and welcome to Wicked Wednesday. My name is Dr. Fish, and I will be your op for this evening. You will not hear my voice very much. Uh, I have two wonderful casters with me who will be playing, who will be doing this uh, lovely match, and that is Marty B and Clarity. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? Excited to cast some pro series. Awesome. It should be exciting. All right, so this as it is quite late here, um, I don't know for both players, but I know for myself, uh, I'm going to get right into the deck list. So for the classes, we have um, Priest, Rogue, uh, Warlock, and Warrior for Snake, and Mage, Priest, Rogue, Warrior for Neji. Uh, the Rogue is banned from... Neji's Rogue is banned, Snake's Warlock is banned. And let's go ahead and get into the lists. Marty, if you want to go through Snake's list, yeah, so Snake had a plan when he came in with this. Okay, he knows Neji likes his Highlander decks, uh, Mage and Priest in particular. So he wanted to hit that as hard as he could. And it goes to show with really three of his four decks, um, Zulok, which was banned, is really good into Mage and Priest. Rogue also does pretty well into Priest itself. It can just play the value and tempo game. So it's very well there. And Bomb Warrior just annihilates any Highlander deck with those bombs. So they're all very strong against those Highlander decks. Then finally, as an all-around good stuff deck against other classes, he brought Highlander Priest. All right. And so, um, Clarity, do you want to go ahead and go through Neji's deck lists? Yeah, I mean, so as Marty said, Neji likes his Highlander decks and brought two of them. He's kind of forced into banning Warlock um, just, to, just to get rid of like some counter cues and stuff like that. But, I mean, playing Priest, in, Priest has the ability to get infinite value and generate lots of things that can answer lots of other things. And still has still has power into what snake's going snake's playing sorry and um i don't know i'm kind of excited to see what'll happen wanted to see the warlock come out but i will say the mage and priest are neji's bread and butter so don't count him out just yet just telling both players now that they can get readied up um, you know, you guys still. Yeah, one more time um, for the bans. Sure. Snake's Warlock is banned, and Neji's. What was it again? Uh, Rogue. His uh, War R Kick Rogue. Rogue. Yes. Or, no, it was. The oh, it's on um, Murder Agra Rogue. Rogue. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sorry. Agro Weapon Rogue is banned. Zulok is banned as well. Yes. We will see Bomb Warrior. And Highlander Priest from both sides. And then Snake has Roll Kick Rogue. And Neji has Highlander Mage. Yeah. Alright, so we're just going to wait on 
players to um you know get all readied up stop showing my <clears throat> and you know it's, um this is pro series so this is obviously as we said open deck list it is conquest best of five this is the uh pro series quarterfinals match uh f2l versus yashiraj's clown college and um there's already been a match correct there has been two yeah so nails won yeah. three to one over berserk and rescue wabbit won three to one over um Kalos luna yes all right so it is tied five to five right now that's giving me massive flashbacks. That's exactly what happened in Hero Semis to us. Yeah. We'll see how this goes. All right. I have sent both players off on their match. Um. So what do you guys think they're going to uh, bring for their uh, first? Yeah. What do you think the classes are going to be for this first match? I think we're going to see a Bomb Warrior Mirror first up. Either that or Neji goes with um, Highlander Mage. I All think right. Neji goes Highlander Mage, but Snake's going to start off with Bomb Warrior. All right, well, we will see. We're going to look for those eyeballs. They are, yeah, they're in match right now. I okay, believe. so bottom, of your, bottom screen is going to be Neji Boston, and top of your screen is going to be Snake for those who are watching. Snake um, goes rogue first. All right. So we have... Highlander Mage from Neji's side, and World Kick Rogue from Snakes. All right. Both having some pretty good starts here. Armor Vendor from Neji. Double Pharaoh Cat for Snake. Not a bad start at all. The Janus is a little awkward from both sides. Neji's hand in general is awkward outside of the Armor Vendor. Clarity, <laughs> what do you think? I'm still trying to load in. My friends list is ah, I see. glitching out on me. All good. Yeah, this fair, these two fair cats are doing work. Snake getting a playable reborn minion in Murray next to his second Pharaoh cat has another reborn minion in Wasteland Assassin for later. It's not terrible, not insane. It won't be a huge difference maker, but the extra value is always nice. Yeah, the, the Zephyr, value is nice. It's a little slow, but yeah, this Zephyr's though. It's the only thing you can play. You have to wonder. Does Neji just use it now? I mean, if you maybe. can guarantee the wild growth, I think you do because your hand is just saying get wild growth. Yeah, and ramp's always good. So, I mean, I guess he could ping the mermy and then trade to get rid of it. But the other option would be crab because mermy will give crab. Yes, there's crab. Yep. So this is going to be a huge tempo swing here. That's really good early pressure for Neji. Fortunately for him, Snake has the answer with the top deck to eviscerate. Yeah. Clears quite easily. Yeah, just taking it easy. And there's a rig fair game. Neji's going to have a hard time getting that activated, though. And he recognizes yeah. that, so he goes for the ping. Jandis on four. You'd love to see it. This is a very strong play. Also sets up for either the Wasteland Assassin or Prep Secret Passage next turn. Now, I like this from Snake. He picked Stranglethorn Tiger as the um, Mirage. So because it has stealth, it won't get attacked. Right. Convincing Infiltrator is a nice pickup for Neji's. Yeah, for convincing Neji's Infiltrator just shuts everything down right now. Yep. I'm going to make things very awkward for Snake in a minute. Backstab is very nice to start off here, though. Gets rid of that Clown Prince. Now Snake needs to figure out how to deal with this Convincing Infiltrator. He could just wait another turn and drop the Wasteland Assassin. But with the prep, the Secret Passage is pretty enticing. 
it is and having five mana to work with the secret passage depending on what the secret passage finds you can really generate a lot of resources and uh, looks like he's going to go for it, especially with that secret passage in hand. He doesn't have to hold on to it for later. Let's see, Swindle, Wand Thief, Eviscerate, and Nitro Boost Poison. Starts with the Swindle. I like this. He can really go off here. And now he can Shadow Step that Jandis to use it later if he should so choose, or continue generating resources with the one mana Wand Thieves that he has. Yeah, another thing of note, that Nitro Boost Poison, now that it's corrupted, will stay in his hand. Yep. That's huge. Finds a Brain Freeze from the Wand Thief too, which is also excellent in most cases. Yeah, I think he was going to go for the Shadow Step potentially, but with Jandis getting destroyed, it didn't really matter all that much. No, and it's it it, it kind of sucks to lose the Jandis not being able to play Shadow Step, but there's plenty of other uses for it that I'm sure he'll be able to find. So Neshi has a lot of decisions here. I don't think he's considering Shadow Hunter Vol'jin. There's not really any good targets on the board. Key Warden Ivory is okay. Sage draws only one card, but it's the biggest body too, and that's what he goes for. Draws Flame Ward. Nothing insane. Yep, and it looks like um, Snake's just going to opt to play the more sticky minion. And I guess he could decide to step the Wand Thief or maybe throw the Brain Freeze out here just to hold that 5-5 five five up a little bit. I think we're just going to stick to Wand Thief here. The Conjure Mana Biscuit is huge. That's going to help later on when we see Questing Adventurer drop. There's also some cute things it can do during those World Kick turns. So, Imprison Seder, the top deck for Neji. Uh, Observer. Observer. Yeah, My Seder, bad. I believe. Wrong one. Yeah, wrong that's one. the Druid one, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. So. A lot of cards in Hearthstone. It's easy to get them mixed up. <laughs> You're not wrong. So I think we're gonna see Flame Ward here, but Neshi might also go for the Keyword and Ivory, which means he wouldn't be able to play Flame Ward. Does make things a little awkward. Thing is, playing Flame Ward here would telegraph that, which means Snake could pick up on it and do something else. So it looks like he's thinking about dropping Observer first. Yep, he's just going to go face and play he's the Flame face. Ward. Seems good. Deals with uh, Snake's boar pretty well. If he doesn't play around it. I think Snake is going to trade now as a result. Going to start off stepping a Wand Thief. I like this. This is looking like a world kick turn. So he'll send the Watley in. Proc the Flame Ward, and now we see World Kick Master come down. He can get a lot of cards off of this. And Eviscerate, that's huge. Combustion also very useful. I think we're going to see the Brain Freeze come down. Cheap combo activator. Yep. Generates more cards. Miscreant first is respectable. And a prize and plunderer too. Yeah, problem is now we're going to have to dump a card. Does that with Witchy Lackey. I'm okay with this. And that is a huge... <laughs> wow. Ahmed is just an excellent card all around. Absolutely. Now, now she's in a bit of trouble. Cards uh, help stall the game a bit, but it doesn't deal with the World Kick Master, and it still leaves Ahmed on the board. That is true. Do you ever rip the Devolving here and attempt to hit the Ahmed? Problem is, there's so many targets, it's very it hard to hit it. Maybe you can get something with Keyword and Ivory, mm -hmm. trying to get a Brain Freeze to kill the World Kick Master. 
Hysteria, second evol devolving, and gift of Lumen. Hysteria is exactly yeah. what Neji is looking for. Yeah, right on the Amet, and this is just going to clear the board, I think. There it is. Yep, Kill that me. was a world kick, too. Yeah, and there's the second Hysteria now. That can answer a lot of big threats for Neji later. When Absolutely. When questing comes down and gets big. So many options. That is Snake true. really does have a lot of options here. Tough to say. What do you want to do? He wants to start with Conjure Mana Biscuit, which I'm okay with. You can really utilize that later. Or now. Yeah, just... It's very easy to get rid of it. And... Not really have to worry about your hand getting clogged up. And here's that big questing we were talking about. Foxy, gonna go with an Eviscerate, probably. This won't actually be as big as it could be. No, it won't. Problem is, we know the second Hysteria is in Neji's hand, so he has an answer. And because he has the Amazing Reno, that means he has an answer to the second questing adventure. Yeah, and the Observer wakes up this turn, so... I mean, it's going to deal with the 3-2 and the 1-1, one, one, turn the questing into a 5-3. Yeah, and then Hysteria just takes care of the rest, really. Yep. Once he does that, it'll be safe to drop the card set, and Neji is chilling at 26 HP and a very sticky taunt. Very, very true. I do love me some Kartot Defender. What they say, our homes, our tombs. <laughs> that is very true. Devolving Missiles. Not so sure about this Devolving Missiles here. Neji doesn't really have a ton to worry about in terms of big threats that he'll want to clear with Hysteria later. He already has the amazing Reno to take care of any other large threats yeah he's gonna draw a secret from his deck finds a counter spell which is nice plays out the car tut and how many spells do we have on snake side to buff that mana worm quite a few yeah it's quite a few that can six yeah, that can be a very big mana worm if it's not dealt with. But then again, like you said, the hysteria is in hand, so the mana worm can be made to go away fairly simply. Yes. I think we're starting with Flick. Gonna give it Rush to make sure we deal with the car tut completely. Yeah, this is very safe from Snake. Neji has successfully slowed the game down the so, pace that he's comfortable with. So do we ever see just, just Reno come down now, or apparently not? It feels very early to Reno, yeah. if you ask me. This is not a threatening board at all. Yes, there is a Mana Worm on the board, but we also have Counterspell down. Very true. It's gonna pop and save this Solarian for the time being. Rigged fair game, not gonna be an issue this turn either. Snake is just going to pop off with this World Kick. Gets a Shadow Step and a Foxy Fraud too. You gotta wonder, does he shadow step the world kick later? Um 
I would. I don't know if it's the correct play or not, but it looks like he's going to shadow step the Foxy, play the SI7, and then... Go ahead and play the Nitro Boost. Uh, we're just making a very, very big mana worm. Yep, that mana worm's getting a little bit out of control. 7-3. Yeah, I, I mean, it's fairly easy to clear, but... There's Reno. Yep, forcing the Reno out. So, Hysteria is still an option. Really... Nashi is going to struggle, though, because he's facing certain lethal. I think he's getting very close now. Yep, he can build another board. He can send this Eviscerate face. If he sh wants to. I mean... Yep. Just plays the Necrium Apothecary for... Minion. That Ice Bear is huge. And now with the... Um, the survival of the fittest, his minions are massive. Yeah, all his minions just got absolutely huge. Yeah, that's a 710 Shadow Hunter Vulgin. We could send back the Apothecary, pull out any other minion. We don't care what it is because we know it's a combo card since it was created from World Kick Master. So we know that we're taking away some sort of value. Play the ice barrier. Play the ice yep. barrier. Yeah. Get a little bit of get a little bit of health back and yeah, that survival of the fittest was actually pretty great. Yeah, and next turn it looks like Dragon Queen Alex Straws is going to be a very safe play. Yeah, it's going to be really hard for Snake to deal with the big minions that are that are coming out at the moment. Is in hand, but does that even matter? Not really, no. It's uh, y you can't really combo it with anything at this current point in time to make it that big. And I mean, it's pretty easily dealt with with a seven ten Vol'jin on board. And I would say the Abyss probably goes. F no, well, I don't know. Thanks, hand is just so awkward. It is, and a 4-4 four, four Edwin feels real bad. Yeah, this is just another place where that mana change from 3 to 4 is relevant because Snake wasn't able to eviscerate at the same time. Yep, that one extra mana stopped it from being a 6-6. Six, six. That is a huge Wand Thief. It is a 7-8 Wand Thief, by the way. I didn't know we were playing Galakron Warrior. Puzzle Box, Power of Creation, or Devolving Missiles. The memer in me wants Puzzle Box. Spike in me really wants Pock here. Power of Creation is just a ton of tempo and threatens lethal. It's really an amazing card, and he has 8 mana left to play it, so... Obviously the correct pick. Let's see what that has to offer. So what, what could he be? I guess he's deciding between Hysteria and Power of Creation. Yeah, yeah this is a very safe way of going about it. Going for the trade here, just playing around any sort of chance of dying this next turn. Yeah, even going to Ray across the 1-1 one, one just to save too much damage from going face. And, I mean, the Eviscerate's in hand, so... And just a, just a dagger up and a pass from Snake. There's just not much for him to do. An extra three attack for the Wand Thief at the same time. Well, there's a few ways that Neji can have lethal here. If he plays DQ Alex, he can get normal Alex Straza for lethal. If he goes with Power Creation, he could get Reckless Rocketeer for lethal as well. No Reckless Rockets. Uh, scavenging Shavar is a 6-3. You probably just take the Dragon Maw because it's the most stats, right? Yes. That's what Neji goes with. 
a big issue is where do these minions go? One probably has to go into the Ed one. Uh, looks like he's just gonna opt to trade both and, and play as safe as possible. The questing is not really the card he needed there. Not at all. It's gonna clear the 7 4 and prep and Evis face and. Just hope that Reno throws the game now because Neji has lethal on board. Er We've all seen it happen before. Uh, Reno is very well known for saying this game isn't over just yet. But decided to BM a little bit with some extra 3 threes. Yep, insult to injury, and game one goes to Neji Boston. Highlander Mage gets through. Does that mean the the priest may be next for Neji? Just to get his Highlander wins out of the way? Or no. We might also see a bomb worry mirror. My concern if I'm Neji is bomb warrior and how I'm getting my priest through that. That is true. That is very difficult. Really, either way, it's a 50-50. So, now you could just flip a coin, go with whatever he wants. Yeah, I mean, he's, I mean, he's got a lead, so he can, he, he can afford to, to pick whatever he wants. Uh, Snake's got to try and counter Q. I got, I think Snake almost has to play the bomb warrior now, right? He doesn't have to. Some people prefer to stick to their own decks. But if he's aiming for points, I would suggest it. Yeah. Warrior versus Rogue. So. Yeah. So there you have it. Snake sticking to his Rogue there. Neji recognizing that his priest was in a pretty bad spot. Goes Ca for Warrior. Cash in the opening hand for Neji is, is very good. Any way you look at it. Double cash. Yep. Shadow Step and Foxy. Can we see a meme Edwin on turn one? We cannot. Well, we don't see it yet. True. If Snake was a good player, he would have coined out the Foxy, Shadow Stepped it, and then prepped the uh, Secret Passage for Edwin. <laughs> That's just disgusting if he finds it. What is that, like a 16-16 Edwin on turn 1, or 14-14 maybe? It's a lot of cards. 14-14, yeah. Yeah. Turn 1, 14-14 Edwin. It's a little hard to deal with. They call that above average. Yes, definitely above average. So what do we have here for... Snake is looking at a lot of options here. Just he is. Not a lot of gas, though. Is it just going to be a backstab and prize plunder to clear the 2-3? Or you know, looks like he's going to trade. I don't mind this trade. You can take the damage early on. Two damage doesn't mean much. In the long that run. is true. Upgraded wrench caliber, obviously, for Neji. Easiest bomb warrior turn of your life. Turn four wrench, you'll love to see it. Yep. And he's got the other cash to back it up. Horde Pillager already in hand. There's going to be a lot of bombs in Snake's deck very quickly. I like this passage from Snake. His hand is pretty dead. He needs something else to do. This gives him things to do. Yep, finds a Miscreant and a Wand Thief. So he's going to be able to generate some decent resources. Bell and Taunt Laggy. Primordial Studies picked off the Wand Thief, I would assume, because it's pretty much the cheaper option. And you get a spell damage mission mi minion to buff your Eviscerates a little bit. Go for the other wrench, just armor up a little bit. And she's just gonna smack face here. Shield block and go face. Bomb Warrior doing what it does best. Yep. 
only three damage showing on the board for Snake, so it's not like there was any reason to trade at this point. Not at all. The nice thing, though, is we can corrupt our Nitro Boost Poison here. Start pushing a little bit more damage. I always like that. There was just Satanic Lackey is pretty nice. I don't know about this order though. Yeah, why why didn't we corrupt there and get the extra two damage on the weapon as well? It really depends on what the play here was from Snake. If he plays the Foxy Fraud here, it makes zero sense. Right. Yes, there it is. Yep, there Mistake it is. Yep. Made. yep, he could have corrupted. And he missed four damage as a result from that. That's highly unfortunate. Yeah, that four damage could be very important later. So Neshi has a few options here. If he wants to use the Shield Slam, he can. Could go for the Quartermaster play. Could start with Ethereal Lackey. Ops for Shield Block. Yep, just gonna get rid of that big taunt. And continue going face. Bomb Warrior continues to do Bomb Warrior things. Yep, how many bombs is that? Three bombs in the deck. And... A minimum of five more ready to ready to get queued up and go in from hand. Oh man, this malevolent strike is so good for Snake. Bombs count as not starting in your deck. So because there's three bombs in deck, it goes down by three. I'm not sure about this betrayal here. Bomb Warrior doesn't play a lot of minions, so betrayal doesn't have a ton of value. I really think I wanted to see that malevolent strike taken. It sounds like a meme, but it already costs the same. All right, I agree. Opting to go with the Horde Pillager rather than the second upgraded Wrench Caliber, maybe? I was thinking about it. It was always good. And you can combo it with the Coerce so you can still go face. I still really don't see any reason not to. If some crazy stuff happens, he's got Deathwing on turn eight, but there's really not anything crazy that can that can happen for Snake here. Absolutely. It's Edwin. Yep, found an Edwin. Is it time to make a big Edwin? Or are we gonna go in with World Kick? I mean, I don't see, I don't see why you don't go for an Edwin here. Can Shadow Step some stuff, make it even bigger? I really want to see this Foxy Fraud come down for. Oh no, we don't even have the space. This is a problem. So we can't play Foxy if we want to Edwin. That means this Edwin is not going to be as big as we hoped. No, it's not, but the Taunt Lackey is going to come down on the Edwin just to make it yeah, that much harder. still very, very menacing, but we already know that Neji has the answer in Deathwing. It's guaranteed to kill the Edwin question is how much more does it kill and it hits it first so it's only going to clear another two minions clears the two one one lackeys world kick still on the board for snake to generate some some options here but there's really not a lot playable as far as combo cards go in his hand yeah nessie just choosing a trade here at this point it means he can't get lethal with three bombs in a row but I think he values getting rid of the world kick. This is a huge risk by Snake here. Yeah, drawing the bomb with the swindle. It's very unfortunate, but 
finally a questing comes out and he can make that decently big next turn. But I don't know if he wants to go for the questing though. His hand doesn't say play questing adventure and go nuts. He just doesn't have the cheap cards to make it big. Yeah, and he doesn't have he really doesn't have the health to to not at least try and get a taunt up, which is I assume why he took the uh Crimson Hothead there. Yeah, Neji is still in an awkward spot though. Without Brawl, he doesn't have any clean way of dealing with the board. Bladestorm and Minefield help for this turn. It's likely that he clears or he'll be able to clear all but one minion if he does that. Correct. And then he'll have just enough mana to get the wrench down. So I think we'll be seeing that. And then he'll be in a good spot. But then Snake will have a taunt come down next turn in that Crimson Hothead. Buys him a little bit of time, and there's but there's still four bombs in his deck. I mean, this this game could really be over at any point. Yeah, something to note. The Crimson Hothead can only be activated with the spell because of the spell burst. And the only spell that Snake has right now in hand is Betrayal, which you can only use on enemy minions. It requires a minion. and Oh, there's, there's prep, so that solves that problem. Right. Gonna go ahead and put the questing down. I assume play the hothead, yep. yep. Prep faceless lackey? I think so. Sword and board and Krasten off deals with the taunt. Gives him four more damage face, so any bomb draw ends the game. Ethereal Lackey discovers some spell. Yeah. Nechi's problem, though, is that he can face lethal if that bomb isn't drawn. Correct. Yes, he can. So I think what we're going to see here is the shield will... Oh, he goes for the Coerce. Looks like yeah. he's thinking just get rid of the... Uh... That's right, he can get rid of the questing adventure this way and stave off lethal just a little bit longer. He's almost there with just the weapon swings alone. And there's already five bombs in Snake's deck. And Krast and Alvin Sword and Board are going to take care of the Crimson Hothead. Yeah, just as you said. Now, any bomb here will end Snake. Yeah, and then he's just down to his Highlander Priest, right? Or, no, uh, yeah, Neji's down to his Highlander Priest, so... Correct. So... Should see Bomb Warrior out of Snake. He does survive another turn. He has no way of surviving this there's, next turn, yeah, though. Yeah, what there's... he'll have to do is he has to kidnap her his... F either... No, he'll have to kidnap her the Faceless Lackey. Try to find some kind of taunt. Yeah. That's the only way, because he doesn't have enough mana to play Evil Miscreant and then a Taunt Lackey. Tempo's out the Prize Plunder to activate the Kidnapper. Yep, goes for Faceless Lackey back to hand. Let's see if he can get that Taunt. Not enough. That's not what we're looking for there, unfortunately. Like this one's going to Neji Boston then. 2-0. Yep. Neji's definitely up 2-0. And there's that. Now, Snake's lineup is built to beat the Highlander Priest, so he can still get there with a reverse sweep. Yeah, but as you said at the beginning of the stream, Neji's bread and butter Highlander decks, that's not going to be easy no matter what you brought. Right. I think I asked me wondering, what do I play now? Uh, I mean, you kind of kind of start off with the the bomb warrior, try to take some of the resources away from the Highlander priest, get bombs in deck, make it happen. Try to get at least one deck through, and then I mean, I, the rogue plays decently well into Highlander priest too, so. 
And it's gonna be the bomb warrior. Cash in Snake's opening hand, and Ooze in Neji's. This is going to be close, just between that Ooze and Raised it alone. Yep. Neji has the exact hand he wants. Really, he can take this game as slow as he wants to because of that. Doesn't have to play any minions at all. Palm reading just solidifies that here too. On curve play. Do you just take the cheap option and get Could yourself a lackey? Could also take Holy Nova. It's not terrible here. Three mana, deal two to all enemy minions. Heal yourself. All your friendly characters, bite two. It's not bad. Yep, Snake gonna coin out, get one bomb in deck, and then almost assuredly you're gonna get answered by the use. That just hurts for Snake. Yeah, you hate to see it. Shield block, get a little bit of armor, see what the draw can be. He's gotta find a Horde Pillager or another... French caliber, honestly. As he just playing out the cars. It's a three mana three three with no text. Doesn't really matter against Bomb Warrior though, and it means your pool for Raise Dead doesn't get diluted. Yep. Being that it and pulls two minions. Yeah, oh. minefield's gonna clear, so the Raise Dead can just get played at any point for a second ooze. Yeah, Neji's just gonna rip that. Yep, rip it, guarantee the ooze. So with the wrench caliber or horror pillager comes out, it's it's already pre-destroyed. Now the one way Snake can get past this is with an on curve Galakron. If he can get Galakron early, there's a good chance that yeah, there it is. There it is. He just so found that it. that will keep him in this game. It means he can just deal three damage every single turn and put a ton of pressure. Yeah, but what's the play on turn six? You don't want to burn a play a Blade Storm, a full retail cutting class. You hate to see it. That hurts. That hurt me, and I'm not even involved in this series. I like Drake is looking pretty nice here. It's looking real nice. It'll be a f four eight four se four eight yeah four seven. It'll be a four eight, I believe. Yeah, four eight. Yep. Yeah. Math is hard. Tell me about it. I can never get my defile clears right. <laughs> So there's some cute stuff you can do with uh, the other ones too. Aeon Reaver is all right. That'll help with some bigger minions since he doesn't really have any large single target removal. Gonna go ahead and play the other cash out, get the second bomb in deck. That's gonna obviously deactivate Zephyrus until a bomb is drawn. Yeah, I like how Snake doesn't play the upgrade here. He knows that Ooze is gonna come down, so the mm -hmm. upgrade is useless. And really, this means that he can safely play Galakron next turn. Can he find a Horde Pillager with Galakron, though? He can. But you know, Snake is pretty good at this game. Yeah. True Hearthstone greats know what cards they're getting. Yeah, so... Neji doesn't really have a ton to do here. He could swap hands with Lucia, but there's really not much for him to steal. Problem is, he's holding um, Mirazond. And Mirazond isn't really great. Yeah, found a Blastmaster Boom and a Blade Storm with the Thought Steal, which, I mean, 7 mana 7 7 is pretty decent, so. 
I've been told Boom is a uh, very good card in the game, so. I like it when I find it, but I haven't played Bomb Warrior in a while now. I'm going to start off with a hero power. Clear the 3 2. Yeah, just rip the Blade Storm. Clear the board. Now we don't have to worry about getting hit in the face again, and we can drop the Horde Pillager to wrench up once more. Yep, and finally no answer for the wrench caliber. It's gonna It's gonna allow Snake to go ahead and upgrade it and start finally generating some bombs. Absolutely. Neji does have an answer to this 8-6 though, which is pretty useful. Yeah, he could just rip the blade storm. I mean He has that, he has Aeon Reaver. It really depends on if he wants to play that Cobalt spell can and hope to get a one mana spell that he can play as well. Looks like he's gonna go the Holy Smite route and probably Penance, which suggests he could go Cobalt Spellkin. Yeah, it looks like he'll start with Spellkin first, get the second Holy Smite. Yep, yeah, found a wave of apathy too. Um, it's not super great because, as you said in the last game, Bomb Warrior doesn't play a whole lot of minions. It's pretty useful in certain cases. Yeah. It's nice against Rattle Gore. As we can see, Rattlegore is in hand. And probably going down this turn. Yeah, this is as good a turn as ever to play Rattlegore, really. Problem is, it's going to get punished if he goes with that. Opting to go with a cutting class, finds a coerce and his second horde pillager. I don't mind this at all. Just get some minions on the board, put some pressure, deal some damage. And that is more bombs in the deck now. With three bombs in the deck, if he does find Dr. Boom after a clear, that's a full board of bombs, and that is a lot of damage when you when you pop those bombs. Potentially a lot of damage if they if they high roll. Yeah, and the thing is, Neshi doesn't really have a way to deal with bombs either. He hasn't drawn Plague of Death, so... If Blastmaster Boom comes down soon, he's... He's in a little bit of trouble, yep. Yeah. You off the Wandmaker, we could go and start with the Renew to see what we get. Healing is always good against the Bomb Warrior as well. Yeah, you always want to try to stay out of range of drawing the bombs, you know, because RNG does happen. Yeah, there's also Breath of the Infinite and Holy Nova as well. That'll deal with the board and heal you up a bit. Very mana efficient here. Clean up the board, keep your minions alive, heal up a bit. So if Dr. Boom doesn't come out, this is... Essentially, a rattle gore turn for the mo. Oh, no, it's not. Not yet. Rattle gore is very risky against Highlander Priest, so it's no surprise that Snake is holding off on it. I think he wants to bait more answers from Neji first. Yeah, the Cabal Acolyte. I was about to say that. It's why we haven't considered dropping Rattlegore just yet. Yep, Wave of Apathy and Cabal takes your, takes your Rattlegore right away from you. Gonna renew, find himself a spell. Heal up a little bit. Do we renew just yet? I, he, he's hovering it, he's thinking about it. Not a ton for us to do. I do like it. The Mirazon isn't bad either here. Getting an extra draw, heal five, so if we draw a bomb, it's negated. And it puts a big body down. None of these spells do all that much. Thought Steel gives us more value, but there's nothing 
inherently in Snake's deck that we want either. Finds a Krastanov and a Minefield. I mean, Krastanov's a 5-mana 4-4. Four, four. It's a little yep. bit of pressure, but it doesn't help Priest otherwise. It's a body. Yep. Yeah, Yell up really a little just, bit. Just trying to find any reason not to play back of all Accolade as a taunt. Deathwing looks really good here. We know Neshi has answers to this. But Snake doesn't really care either. I mean, at this point, Snake's been sending 7 damage face for 3 turns now. 4 bombs in deck. Draws 1 off the top. Yep, another bomb. There's Galakrond. Will answer the Deathwing. It does, but do we want to give up our hero power? I don't think at this point, at this low health, I think you probably need to keep it for a little while longer. There's other ways to deal with the Deathwing. I mean, you I could essentially win. still have your own 12-6. There is a Coerce in hand, though. Four snakes. So, so they both have answers to the board. Regardless of what happens. Yeah, looks like Cabal Acolyte is going to come down. Come yeah. Followed by a wave of apathy. Now, something to note. Snake doesn't have to play the Coerce either. He has Bladestorm and Minefield, which deal with this very cleanly. And it'll allow him to set up a bomb as well. Ooh, the Sword and Board is extra spicy actually because that means he can use the sword and board opting to go with everything thereof. yep yeah so let's see what he chooses either way this will be very clean and it means he can play the horde pillager and hero power at the same time if he chooses to that is if he goes for the sword and board play here Yeah, I mean, sets Neji to three. It's just such a strong play. Any bomb draw ends it. Neji is a skilled gamer, though, and avoids the bomb for one more turn. Problem is, he needs to heal up and fast. He needs to heal up a lot. There's another 7 damage coming face next turn. And... I mean, you have you have Penance, Holy Nova, and... Your Hero Power and Galakron that can heal you up right now. And... That's it. Yeah, I think we're gonna see some combination of Penance, Hero Power, or Galakron. Mirazon just doesn't seem like it answers the board well enough. Or answer this threat well enough, really. Puts him up to nine, so... Oof, that upgrade. It's going to put him down to one... Next turn. Or two, sorry. This will put him down to two Correct. HP. With five bombs in the deck. And Snake has answers for the board as well. And plenty of mana to play them. You just go face here all day long. Yeah, it's really not looking good for the Highlander Priest here. Worse and Mindful are so clean here. Still dodging the bombs, though. I mean, healing and... Healing and playing Galakron buys you one more turn. 
but what do you do from there though how do you get out of this i don't i don't think there's i really don't think there's any way out i guess well there is one you can galacron next turn like you can hero power your galacron next turn and then get a sandhoof water and right. that'll heal you by five so you survive one more turn but i don't think that's going to be enough there's other ways too of course there are taunts that would help neji but I'm not seeing it right now. Yeah, I mean, he was hovering a Lucia, but w I mean, we can see there's there's no type of answer in. Bomb Warrior is one of those decks where there's really not much you want to steal from them. Yeah, there's... especially after they've played their wrenches and their horde pillagers, really. Yeah, I think the only thing he can do this turn is Hero Power and Galakrond. And hope RNG's on his side for the next turn and try to buy another one. Room also coming down. Not that it matters all that much. Yeah, and Snake can just continue to armor up. Yeah, try to find Lethal with a shoot lackey. Yeah. These are all really good spells. They are. Board just to clean up the broom. And send another seven face. Set him back down to two and ask for another answer. Can she do it for one more turn? He cannot. Bomb off there's, the top. Yeah, there's the bomb. That'll make it one to two now. So it's... We, we can either see the rogue from Snake's side, or we can have a priest mirror. Oh no, I'm not looking forward to this. That was mirror. Pre that was pretty quick. <laughs> oh, he's gonna bring out the rogue. Rogue plays decently well into priest, so if he can get it through, that's pretty good. Questing good for him. In the end. Yep. Not so good for us since we'll be on stream for quite a while after that's the case well good thing i like hearthstone i guess <laughs> oh no i'm not ready for a priest mirror draconic studies start for neji take the big old whelp get the draw makes sense five five body Care to make a widget, friend. foxy swindle for snake And he just going with the pseudo card draw in Thought Steel. Gets Thought a questing. Steel, it's one of the most powerful cards Priest can use against Rogue because you're desperate for that value against them. Does get a Bone Wraith off of the Pharaoh Cat. Bone Wraith is pretty good, but doesn't yeah, really apply a whole lot of pressure. This turn from Neji is really awkward right now because you're going to want a questing mm -hmm. and you want to get miscreant down too because you, you'll have a bunch of one mana spells to pop off with the questing problem is you need to waste resources this turn before you can do that so do you so do you questing coin holy smite if you're playing the questing this turn or i don't think this is the turn to play questing mm -hmm. you're just asking for it to get eviscerated True. If anything, you'll play Miscreant, but I don't know if Miscreant is really all that great here either because you're dumping a coin for it. Looks like he is going to go with the questing coin Holy Smite. Yeah. I guess at the very least it does eat up and eviscerate. Yeah, problem is, if this questing survives, Neshi doesn't have any ways of making it bigger. Which is why I wasn't really on the questing train. He's a very early world kick master, by the way. I mean, he got his uh, he got his eviscerate back though, so that's something at least. These are some very interesting choices here for Neji. I don't think you take the Shadow Madness, but you're thinking whether you want Hysteria or Raise Dead. 
both are very good for the priest. Hysteria taking care of several minions on the rogue side. Yeah, we're going to see Hysteria here. Raise dead, though, has value, especially with the questing adventure in the, in the res pool, yeah. The big old whelp from turn one finds a DQA. That'll be nice in a few more turns. Gonna go ahead and drop the questing maybe for Snake. That'll corrupt the Nitro Boost Poison, just draw. We can yep. also clear this whelp. And ship a good amount of damage face. The Hysteria kind of deals with most everything next turn, though. It really depends on whether Snake wants to use this Nitro Boost Poison. Obviously, he doesn't know about the Hysteria like us. Right. So, this Nitro Boost is going to be punished. Really. Because now that whole board can get cleared. With Hysteria, will it clear the Reborn too, or will he still have a 2-1 on board? He'll have a 2-1 on the board. I gotcha. But really, as the Priest, you're not worried about a 2-1, especially when you can drop Evil Miscreant next to it. Right. Yeah, this Cobalt and Faceless Lackey, just great pickups. Yep, Ops to go ahead and clear the 2-1. Clear board going into turn 7 for Snake. And Secret Passage is pretty much the only option here, right? Yeah, pretty much. Finds a World Kick and an Eviscerate, so he can start trying to generate some things. Unfortunately, only finds a Kidnapper. Now, the entire board is cleared. Good thing for Snake, though, is he has a zero mana world kick. He's really going to have to make that world kick value stretch, though, because he doesn't have that second one anymore using it earlier this game. We know Priest can play the long game, and Rogue can too, but it's going to be harder with only one world kick. Yeah, it's a lot of resource generation gone for Snake. Yeah, and now this silence is just going to take away more tempo later in the game. That can very easily answer a questing adventurer. Old Sneaky Finger and Faceless Lack, you're very good here. Yep, and finds an egg. That egg actually isn't useless either with Hysteria in hand. Yeah, right. It's like this is a world kick turn. Yeah, world kick one thief to start. Uh, and then Apothecary. Not what you want to see. No, not at all. I mean, it's either AI or Ray of Frost. AI is a little expensive. Ray of Frost is the cheap option. I like the Ray of Frost here. Shadow Sculptor drawing quite a bit there. And generates another prize plunderer as well. That is pretty big being playable. So turn 8, he turns around with a board. And Nashi doesn't really have a clean... Or he does have an answer to this, actually. He has Wild Pyromancer. And that'll clear the board if he chooses to go that route. And it looks like that's what he's going to do. Do you like to play with fire? 
Yeah, the silence into one maker and just play the other one mana spell cleans everything up nicely. Mind Vision is a great pickup. Question is, do you want to heal your pyro here? I mean, might as well keep it around. Yeah, yeah she agrees. Kidnapper. Not a bad pull. Yeah, six mana combo sap. Snake's really hurting on this luck, this game. Starving Buzzard is not what you want to see. Not at all. Harrison's a decent body, but... And this is just going to get answered with Hysteria, too. Really, if Neji wants to, he can trade into one of the two ones and Hysteria, and that'll clear the board and very likely give him a 3-4 minion. Yeah, I would say that's... I mean, that seems pretty good. On the other side, Snake has a lot of expensive things and an Edwin. Yeah, there's not a ton he can do. I mean, you could prep secret passage and, and try to find something, but... Not pulling Edwin, though, and that's very awkward. Yep. Really not a whole heck of a lot of cards left in deck for Snake either, so he's got kind of got to get something going. Absolutely. Yep, and as he goes for the play that we were thinking. Yep, trades out the 2-1, heals face, and sends it back over to Snake. That Miscreant pickup is huge, by the way. Yep. Open up with Ray of Frost, play the Miscreant, see what you get. Yeah, this will make Edwin very big, too. That's exactly what you want to see. Titanic Lackey is pretty good here. Protects your Edwin. The Wall Lackey, also a little bit of damage. You're going to need that if you want to win this game. And here comes Edwin. 10-10 Edwin, Edwin turns out to be pretty good. Unfortunately for Snake, Neji picked up the answer in Kidnapper. So it's likely we see that come down here. Very effective against Edwin of all minions. Since it requires resources to make Edwin as threatening as he is. And yeah. as we know, Snake pretty much wasted all of his. Yeah, I mean, he could play Cabal and then Kidnapper, possibly steal the 1-6 taunt, leave two one ones on the board for Snake, and I mean, that obviously feels pretty good. And it looks like that's exactly what he's going to do. Yeah, Snake's really feeling this now. Could make another Edwin, but it doesn't do a lot. Aircat finds a Temple Berserker, which is not great. No, it's not ideal at all. Does he really have another option other than trying to make another big Edwin? He could go for the flick play. Very well could. Don't think we're seeing it though. Here comes Edwin. A little bit smaller than last time. Still pretty big. Still an 8 8. So now what do you do if you're Neji? 
Don't exactly want to take a whole lot of damage from that Edwin turn after turn after turn. Absolutely. So, I have a few options here. Could go with DQ Alex. Not ideal. Breath of the Infinite is not bad. I do think you could take 50 50. Breath is not clear because you have a reborn minion on the board. So if you go with Breath into Galakrond, you're looking at a 50 50. It is. Er, oh, right, it's not. That's right. I forgot the minion has to attack. It does clear. Yeah, so I'm just... Guys, I am washed up. Good job, Fish. <laughs> Way Sorry. to come from the yeah, back on I'm that muted, one. I'm muted on stream, but I, I forgot that I'm not muted in Discord. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, continue, guys. I am uh, very washed up. So, thanks, guys. I, I didn't see it either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the secret passage here looks very good for snake the questing adventurer coming down can get a swindle Almost out of card. really i don't know how useful that swindle is though i mean this is really the last big threat for snake yeah and there's not a lot he can do here I'm not sure about this evil oh, miscreant don't know that I, there's really not a way to make the questing big enough oh it's just going to get cleared it looks like he's going for maximum lackey value here lackeys can do crazy things but i don't see them getting it done this turn no i mean what you see is what you get is what snake has i'm not sure what his last card is but Shadow Skull. Or, oh, you mean the final card in deck. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so he has a Draconic Lackey, which could do some funny stuff, depending on the dragons he finds. Uh-oh. That's a six-man in Mirazon. Can that do anything for Neji in a few turns? Thanks to prep, the Holy Nova is playable. Yeah, kind of off to play it. Get himself a 3-3 questing and a couple more bodies on board. Oh, it's another Edwin. Ah, uh, so that other Edwin was generated. Yep. So that's why he went for the Lackey play. He can just make a huge Edwin. Problem is... Neji has the answer once again. Shadow Word Death sitting in hand. I mean, I really don't think there's any way out. Well, the nice thing is Snake has Counterspell. True. But Neji has ways of playing around Counterspell too, which makes this very awkward. Gonna throw the Counterspell right out there. DQA is pretty nice. That's huge. That's also a very good pull. That'll yep. stop fatigue. That's a phenomenal pull. I'm gonna protect the Edwin as much as he possibly can. A snake isn't out of this yet. And we'll have to see, and it's a 14-14 Edwin, we'll have to see what he rips first. Finds a raised dead so he can easily test for the counter spell. But the two taunts protecting the Edwin is a big deal. I guess he can play that Shadow Word Death straight out now. Uh, the Shadow Word Death will take care of everything, and then the Apotheosis sticking on Questing Adventurer means Neji will heal back a ton. Over the next few turns. Snake has Flick to deal with it. Which is useful, but 
he won't be putting a ton of pressure on either. Yeah, I mean, Neji's going to get a massive initial heal. Spell looks nice here, but it doesn't do a lot. There it is. Energy back at 30. Out of card. So does he have to play that taunt every turn just to just to protect himself a little bit and stay, try to stay out of range. Well, he has to play it. I think he has to play it here because he needs to drop flick, right? Yeah, he or definitely he has, has to flick the questing. questing. Yeah, and that leaves us with four mana. And our only four mana play is Conjured Mirage. It's gonna get cleared by Mirazond and the other minions. It's our only way of surviving, cleanly. So we're gonna go with the kidnapper play here, which is also fine. Really, kidnapper versus flick doesn't make a huge difference. Flick, I guess, is more versatile later on. But really, with the one mana dragons, I wouldn't say it matters. Yeah, and the 310 is still clearable. It's going to start off with DQA, see what he gets. I like starting with this. Those are very good pickups. Yep. Yasir is huge. Evasive Fey Wing has survivability. And we get Dream. Rip her on DQA. I think Snake's only out is Deathwing. Yeah. Doesn't That's get it though. It. So he's technically alive for one more turn. But I don't see how he gets out of this. Yeah. Snake doesn't yeah. either. So he just concedes on the spot. And there we have it. Neji takes it 3-1. And we avoided a pre-smear. Yeah, that's the first thing I gotta thank Neji for. <laughs> I know, right? God, I was not ready to be here for another hour. Oh, no, me either. I gotta be at work in 3 hours and 50 minutes, so... All right, let's All right everyone, I have gotten Neji, uh, the Neji approval to do an interview. We're going to make it quick for you two. Um, so, go. Hello, hey. hello, Mr. Neji Boston. Congratulations on getting that win. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, well, well played, and thanks for no pre smear. Yeah, I was <laughs> yeah. going to. I say mean, the that same. match. Felt we can thank longest. Snake for that one for not killing Priest until game five if it came to that. Yeah, uh, that would have been miserable. Yeah, that was already a long game. That was almost a pre smear. I was going to say that was a pre smear in itself. <laughs> Let's not lie. Uh, there was a lot of drawing involved, so I wouldn't say it was that. Bad. No, no. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was something. Definitely a bit wonky, though. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, one of the things we were wondering was your opening strategy. When you started game one, you could have opened with either Mage or Warrior. Really? Sure. Or sorry. Yeah, Mage or Warrior. Um, what made you decide to open with Mage? Um, I felt like Mage had a pretty decent matchup spread. I think it was, in my opinion, I think Mage had the best matchup spread across all of them. It could beat any of the decks. And, I mean, honestly, the worst one for me 
based on my tech choices. I think the worst one was the whirl kick, so I was lucky to get the win on that. But um, also, it's probably my most comfortable deck. I've played so many games of Mage, so I'm like, might as well start off with my uh, my strongest. Very fair, and it worked out too, like you said. Even though it was your worst matchup, mm-hmm. kind of lucked into it there, mm-hmm. and took the W. Yeah, I will say there was one thing in the last game. Oh my god, I made the stupidest choice ever. I chose the... I can't remember where I was discovering, but I just picked a silence instead of a Breath of the Infinite. It was literally the dumbest thing I've ever done. Yeah, I saw the silence over that the was, breath. I was, like, I was trying to be cute and like get a silence on like an Edwin or something, but the breath was actually just so much better. Yep, it worked, it worked out in the breath end. Breath in that matchup really pulls its way. I guess... Silence can be decent with um because you had Pyro in hand, right? That was kind of my thinking, but I got Omega Punish because I top decked Apotheosis the next turn. Right. So I was kind of kicking myself for picking the silence there. So Clarity, do you have any questions? I can't think of any off the top of my head. My brain <laughs> is fried, dude. <laughs> yeah, I think you're all fried from that. Yeah. But uh yeah. congratulations. That puts you guys ahead. It is now, I believe, nine to six, correct? Because it was tied before. Yeah, nine yes. to six. Yes. Yeah. So nine yes. to six out of three matches played, or three matches played. Three matches, yes. Three matches played. Mm-hmm. Two more left. Do you know when those will be? Um, I can check our schedules right now. Um, Lumbles is Friday at sixteen EST, whatever that is. And um, that's let me four. See. Okay, and I don't have Valera's schedule. I'll have to check with Valera when they're playing. But yeah, that's when Lumbles is tomorrow. We're st- no, Friday, sorry. All right. Well, looking... Well, none of, I don't think we have either of those on the schedule uh, for streams, but those will be great. Um, obviously, any last... Um, Comments, shout outs you want to give before we go ahead and wrap this up. Um, shout outs to my team. They've been great with the prep all season. And uh, especially this week, a lot of us are prepping for the Masters Tour. So we've been practicing a bunch for that. So I think that's actually helped keep my uh, my game up. So I've been playing a lot of Hearthstone recently. But uh, yeah, thanks for casting the game, guys. Yeah, thanks yep. for coming on. Yeah, thanks for yes. playing, yeah. for sure. Yes, thank you to mm-hmm. Neji Boston for playing. Thank you to Snake for playing. Thank you to Marty B and Clarity for casting. And, um, yeah, we will see you tomorrow for uh, Thursday Throwdown. A couple of really good Hero Series Finals matches coming your way. Um, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, have a great night, everybody. Stay safe, and we will see you tomorrow. See y'all later, and thanks for coming out. Have a good night.